Welcome to the Unity Workshop this morning. Uh, I know there are some confusion with the um, schedule in, outside on the print and the online. Uh, there are actually two sessions today. We have a morning session uh, uh, taken by me on creating next-gen games using Unity. And later, they will be taken by Brad uh, talking about 2D in Unity for the next probably six hours. <laughs> All right, I'll just go through the, today's topic. So uh, a little bit about myself, um, I'm the founder of Envisage Reality and uh, Prodigy Production LLC. We do serious games for the army and also our own original content. Myself, I have 13 years of development game experience and our last ship title was actually on the Windows Phone 7, on, uh, the title is called Armor Valley. So let us look at the trend in the smartphone casual gaming. We know that tablets and smartphones are getting a lot more powerful than they used to be. And what we see that as a future trend that casual games don't really need to be 2D anymore. They can actually be 3D. So what I want to do is actually show you one of the games that uh, was launched last year. This was actually by uh, Natural Motion. I think some of the guys are outside. So this is a casual game for breeding horses. So if you look at the quality of the rendering and it's all in full 3D and it runs, you know, at a very acceptable frame rate on actually the iPad 1 as well. So consumers, when they are introduced to this kind of 3D, we can see that they are going to accept 3D more as a medium that you can use, not only just 2D for casual games. So what I want to talk to today about is how to use Unity to create this uh, high quality content. So this is a video and if you can see it, this is running in Unity on the iPad. It's running at 30 FPS, no problem. In fact, it's probably can run higher, but I locked it to 30 FPS. And this is how it looks in the Unity itself. So one thing about doing mobile development for casual, the first thing you want to do is keep polygon counts low. But if you look at the slides here, uh, you can read this. This polygon, this model has about 20,000 vertices, 25,000 triangles, with double set UVs for light mapping and with skinning. So this was reduced from a high poly polygon using a tool. So the quality of the triangles was not so good, but you can run fine. So comparatively to iPad 1, I think the iPad 2, in my experience, pushes about twice the amount of polygons. So you can actually create very high quality uh, models in the game now. So uh, one technique that you use in Unity, what is called level of detail. So I did not, um, this one I didn't use in the demo, but just talked talk about it. Uh, if you look at the Unity part on the right, so what level of detail does is you can swap out lower resolution models when you're further in the distance. And the Unity set will let you allow to really set this based on the percentage. So if your model reduces like 50% below the screen, it will switch to another model. So you can see that at the 50%, it switches to another model that is only of 356 triangles. So this is one of the really uh, old technique that we use to optimize large levels in games and Unity provides us a very simple way to actually just visualize this. The next thing is uh, to optimize in the games for levels is about occlusion cowling. So in occlusion cowling, what it does is if you look at this picture on the right, the wall, there's a very big wall blocking everything behind it. But if you look at just this camera, what they're doing is they're still rendering the whole parts of the camera. And this obviously is a lot of wastage of polygons being sent to the, to the graphics card to draw. What occlusion culling does is, it's able to use the big wall and reduces all the things behind. This is a very big performance boost for doing big levels. If you look at games like Spider-Man or Incredible Hulk or Superman, that those in big cities, so they use this technology uh, called Umbra, and this is integrated into Unity directly to you to just build it from the editor that you can do occlusion cowling. So very must if you are doing very big levels. So 
what you want to do I mean, in mobile games is still the same as what we have in the old PC days, is to reduce draw count batching. So if you're not using tiling link textures, so what you can do is actually using a texture atlas, which means to pack as much textures into one big texture as possible. Well, the only limitation is if you have tolerable things like floor, you can't really use it. But other than that, you can actually put as much thing as possible to reduce your draw counts. Draw counts is the killer of, of the any, any PC games as well. So what you want to do is to batch things together, different material to do together. So you look at this example that we do, the feet, the hand, the headband, and the, even the hair on the head looks similarly black. So what we can do is actually we batch these four together into one texture. Because they look the, the same, the material, they feel the same. So this is how we reduce the call. Instead of having individual, we batch them into one texture together and one material. So, so other than that, for texture sizes, so um, may I ask how many of you are artists here? Are there any artists in the room? No. Okay, that's good. So what artists like to do is they tend to use a lot of textures that are a lot bigger than necessary. But in mobile phone, we have limited memory space. What you want to do is use the smallest amount of textures that looks good enough. And in Unity, what you're going to see is there is a lot of options here, but I just zoom it up, that you can actually customize the texture size per platform. So if you're doing PC, Android, and iOS, different platform, different size, you have different resolutions. Instead of having different files locating in your repository where you have to you know, do multiple, you can actually just import them and change the size as you want. So this is a very useful feature that you can do to adjust your textures based on your platform. Oh, the other thing is mid mapping. So I'm not sure if this the picture is visible. So mid mapping is what you want to do to create smaller textures, which the engine will swap when it's farther away. So without mid mapping, you actually see a lot of these grainy things because the texture has to be calculated very quickly to shrink down, and they will uh, often don't do a good job. So, but in the offline processing side, you can calculate the mid map beforehand. They can actually smooth them out the whole uh, further parts of the textures. They use a smaller texture and it fits better. So you don't have that uh, grainy effect. So what Unity has a function is, there's a tool here, there's a mode here that you can change to draw mid maps. And what the mid map does is allow you to see whether your textures fit the size that you want. So here you have see a few colors here. What it means is white means that the texture actually fits directly onto the screen ratio perfectly. It's a one-to-one -one match. But if it's blue, it means that, okay, your texture has been stretched a bit, so you can probably use a higher resolution texture. And if you move it away, so when it shows red, it means that your texture, you're wasting space. You're using a very big texture, and actually, you're only seeing a very small part of it. So you want to optimize so that you don't have a lot of red parts. And this is dependent on your game distance that you're viewing. So you're doing on a main character, you probably don't want it to look, look red all the time, because it means that you're wasting a lot of your texture size. So you can string it down to, to get, get it to look white. So Unity itself also ships with a lot of uh, optimized mobile shaders that you can do next-gen effects. So here, for these glasses here that we do, we have actually uh, reflection and transparent shaders that you can actually just uh, drag and drop inside. So I'm going to show you the shader itself. So uh, it's a mobile shader. You have the ability to customize color. You can put in the texture. You can put in a reflection map. That, that was how it's been done. All default shaders are built from Unity. Uh, this is how the texture looks like. I'm so sorry, it's a little dark. And the right is the reflection map of an environment. So we, when putting this together, you get a metallic look instantaneously in Unity. So talking about lighting, so in uh, mobile games, I think on the platforms, what you want to do is to minimize your lighting. Uh, Real-time lights are the killer. You don't want to have lights as much as possible. If you do avoid the point light, use the direction light. But the real thing in killer in mobile in Unity that is there is no real-time shadows. So this is what you mean by real-time shadows when you 
your light moves, your shadow will look very good. This is a soft shadow in available for PC version only. So what you have in the techniques to do this in Unity is uh, a projector shadow. So the projector shadow will cast a light from the top and you will put a shadow below on that. So that is the rather, that is the sort of the only way that we can do uh, real-time shadows. It's not as exact nice as a soft shadow, but well, we see in the future tablets, we hope the performance improves, then we can do on better shadows. But so far, you're only limited to projector shadows that can do a circle. So the next thing about what we really like to achieve is actually this, right? This kind of quality in Unity. So this is what we know as global illumination. You have uh, lighting that bounces a lot with lights. So what Unity has is actually they integrate a tool called BIS that can calculate offline uh, lighting inside. So you can see the cool is being calculated in this way to achieve this kind of quality. Although this is for PC side. So how do we move this to mobile? And we're going to look at this. So the theory of light mapping is simple. The light mapping is you have a diffuse texture. This is your base texture. And this is the lighting information calculated from the artists they use, uh, V-Ray, 3D Max, or Maya, whatever. Then your engine cal blends these two together, you will get a fake effect of a lighting like that. This technique uh, is being used even in next gen games. I know that uh, Unreal, Unreal 3, they are, some of the games where you see very high quality, they are mixing light mapping with real-time lighting. So this is still a very te valid technique for you to use on mobile at this stage. So in terms of what we did is for the feed for the shadows, we did bake a light map. Then you can just actually draw it onto the thing to fake the shadows occlusion. So for things that are static and non-moving, this is a very good way for you to up your visual quality. Uh, combine it with a projector shadow for characters that are moving, your, your scene will actually look very, very good. So uh, next I talk about lighting. So uh, if you're doing photography or um, film, you know about this three-point lighting. So what you do is three-point lighting basically is you have one key light that emits you, the back light will emit the back of you, and the field light will emit the field on the side light. So the three-point lighting is sort of a standard model that we use to achieve, uh, I think, quality effects in terms of the uh, when you're doing a lighting a character. So what I did here actually was actually to add in two lights, one from the field light and one from the key light. So this is how it looks like without lighting, and this is how it looks with just the Feel like uh, the key lights, sorry, and this is how with the uh, feel like key light and feel like. So you can see there is a little edge there that does a little bit better. So of course you can add more lights because this is uh, for me this is a more more small demo. So you can actually uh, you have the performance to spare. But if you're building a much bigger game than this, you probably want to reduce like say to one light or two lights at most. Uh, one of the next feature we have in Unity is actually light probes. Uh, light probes are a very s uh, cheap way to simulate uh, global illumination. So what it does is you, sp you place a lot of these markers in the scene. These markers will actually encode lighting information in them. So they don't really light things up like a real light, but they can. your shaders will use it to calculate uh, subsurface scattering lighting. So what it means by this is, if you look at this... Uh, little spear here, it is appearing a little reddish. So there is a light probe here that gives the red color. So you calculate that to simulate the red light. So if you move towards here, it will become a little green. So this is what, how it's simulated by subsurface scattering. So there is character here, uh, you have the green light is affecting and the red light. So this is what you do, one of the feature in Unity. I, I didn't show you in this demo, but you can have it there to simulate works on mobile as well. So we're going to talk about uh, the last thing of the thing is particles, particle effect, alpha blending. Alpha blending will actually kill your performance very big time. So what you want to do, instead of alpha blending your particles, say you're doing explosions, consider using an animated texture to get real-time effects. So I'm going to just show you actually another uh, demo that we did. But actually, you want to use this model, but they say it's not casual enough. But when you look at it, it's all this fire we do is actually real animated textures fire that you can actually put together, then you can achieve very realistic fire effects. 
Hey, the, I mean, the last slide, so I'd like to encourage you to check out this demo, Shadow Gun and Unity. They provide a whole scene and actually they talk a lot about other techniques or how you can optimize bigger levels, how to do the, the lighting, the fog, and the, um, how should I say, the flex as well. So there's, there's a full source available, the techniques are written there, how to get optimized for bigger levels. So this is how the techniques that we use in Unity to create this demo. So, uh, this is so I'm available for questions if you have. Nope. No questions, then we just finish on time and then we have a 10 minute break before Brad takes over. All right, thank you.